Varig Flight 254 was a Boeing 737 241, C, N21698, registration PPVMK, on a scheduled passenger flight from Sao Paulo, Brazil, to Belém, capital city of the state of Pará in the country's north region, on 3 September 1989. The flight had several intermediate stopovers, the last being in Maribor, Paror. Prior to takeoff from Maribor, the crew entered an incorrect heading into the flight computer, flying deep into a remote area of the Amazon jungle. Attempts to reach an alternative airport were unsuccessful, and the plane eventually ran out of fuel, making a belly landing in the jungle 1,050 miles 1 northwest of Rio de Janeiro. Of the 54 passengers and crew, 13 passengers died and many more sustained serious injuries. The survivors were rescued two days later. Topic. Background The flight was a scheduled service from São Paulo to Belém with stopovers in Uberaba, Uberlândia, Goiânia, Brasilia, Imperatriz, Maribor, and finally Belém. The São Paulo-Belém route had an approximate duration of 8 hours and 20 minutes. At 9.43, Flight 254 left Garilos International Airport, Sao Paulo, heading towards Belém. The flight crew consisted of 32-year-old Captain César Augusto Padula Garce, 1st Officer Nilson de Souza Zil, 29, and four flight attendants. The flight went smoothly through all the stops, and at 17.20, the crew was arranging the final preparations at Maribor Airport while the passengers were boarding. Incident <inaudible> 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 While First Officer Zill was making an external inspection of the aircraft, Captain Garce consulted the flight plan for the magnetic heading to Belém. The flight plan read 0270. Garce interpreted this as 270 degrees, but the intended meaning was 027.0 degrees. Varig's heading notation for the flight plan was changed to four digits from three while Garcet was on vacation, and it did not explicitly specify the position for the decimal point, which was implicitly located to the left of the rightmost digit. That confusion was the primary cause for the disaster, along with other minor errors. The captain therefore set the left side horizontal situation indicator HSI to 270 degrees, i.e. a due west course. This heading is clearly inconsistent with a route from Maribor to Belém. After setting the HSI, Garce programmed the Aircraft Performance Management System PMS to the distance to Belém 187 nmi or 346 km or 215 miles. The flight plan indicated an altitude of 29,000 feet 8,800 meters FL 290, and a leg duration of 48 minutes. When co-captain Zill got to his seat, instead of checking his own flight plan to adjust his HSI, as he was required to do, he only referenced the captain's indicator and set his to match it. At 17.45, Flight 254 took off from Maribor, and the autopilot steered the aircraft to a heading of 270 degrees away. When Garce believed the aircraft to be close to the destination, he attempted to use his VHF radio to communicate with Belem Tower. Failing to do so directly, he used another Varig airliner operating flight RG-266, as a radio relay to talk to Belem Airport. When Garce managed to establish communications with Belem, he requested descent clearance, and received it. Upon performing his descent, the captain found it very odd that he could not recognize any of the characteristic geographical features of the Belém area such as the Marajo Island and the Amazon River estuary, and even asked the tower controller if the city was without electricity. 
In 1989, Bell M Airport still had no radar, and so the controller informed Flight 254 that it was the only one in its airspace, and gave it landing clearance. After the PMS started indicating negative distance to its destination, Captain Garcet decided to execute a 180-degree turn and locate Belem visually. He also descended the aircraft to 4,000 feet 1, meters and reduced its speed to 200 knots 370 km per hour, 230 miles per hour. Reluctant to use the HF radio to request help, the captain decided to take visual reference from a river he located below the plane, believing it to be the Amazon. The river was actually the Zingu, which runs chiefly south-north, while the Amazon runs west-east. At that time, the flight had already taken 30 minutes longer than scheduled, and the passengers were getting anxious. When First Officer Zill finally noticed their initial mistake, he and the captain decided, after checking their navigation charts, to make contact with Santarem Airport, believing it to be the closest airport, and made an almost 180-degree turn, now establishing a 350 magnetic course. After some calculations, Garcet realized that the aircraft did not have the necessary fuel to reach Santarem, and he started heading south again along the now properly identified Zingu River. Finally, he decided to contact Maribor Airport again, to find his location. The radio frequency of Goiania's locator was the same as Maribor's, and Garcet mistakenly tuned to Goiania, located approximately 675 nmi 1,250 km, 777 miles south of Maribor. The captain was already nervous, and he failed to notice that the tuned locator's Morse code identifier was not consistent with Maribor's beacon. At 20.05, Bell M Center called Flight 254 again demanding a report. The captain stated that he had a 170 magnetic heading to Maribor in reality it was Goiania, and that he was receiving a bearing from the Carajas beacon which actually was the Barra do Garcas beacon. Garcet was perplexed when Belem informed him that the Carajas beacon had been shut down since 1930, and the center decided to illuminate the Carajas runway in an attempt to facilitate Flight 254's orientation. Realizing that he would not have enough fuel to reach Belem, the captain decided to head for Carajas Airport, which would have been the correct decision if he had not mistaken Goiania for Maribor. Another opportunity to solve the situation was missed at approximately 2030, when the flight passed within 100 nautical miles 190 kilometers, 120 miles of the Serra do Cachimbo Air Force Base, a very large airfield which the 737 could have successfully reached. After that, it was inevitable that the aircraft would have to make a forced landing into the rainforest in the north of Mato Grosso. At the time there were no written procedures for such an emergency situation. Garcet and Zill decided to fly at 8,000 feet 2, meters until they ran out of fuel, thus avoiding a possible explosion upon landing, and with the engines on, they would still have hydraulic power to command the aircraft's ailerons and flaps. They also decided to keep the plane flying slightly above stall speed, which in this case was around 150 knots 280 km per hour, 170 miles per hour. During their descent, they spotted very few lights through the jungle, coming from the houses of farms that had electrical generators. At 2040, Garcet informed Belem Center that he would be making a forced landing over the jungle. A few minutes later, when he had 15 minutes left of fuel, Garcet informed his passengers of the situation. When there was around 100 kilograms (220 pounds) of fuel remaining, the left engine stopped. The right engine ran for a further two minutes and then stopped as well. Even after shutdown, the engines were still windmilling thanks to the passage of the air through them. This gave the airplane some rudimentary and unreliable hydraulic control. 
Garce commanded the lowering of the flaps, which only moved to position 2, around 10 degrees due to the failing hydraulic system. With the batteries discharged, there was no electrical power and the only four instruments working in the cockpit were the artificial horizon, the altimeter, the airspeed indicator and the vertical speed indicator. The only thing the crew could see on the horizon were faint light spots due to distant forest burnings, and at 21.06, local time, the plane crash landed over treetops that extended over 50 meters 160 feet above ground. The deceleration due to the crash was such that passengers without fastened seat belts were flung to the front of the airplane, and some seats detached from the floor, also racing forward. When the aircraft fell through the foliage, two thick trees tore away both wings, and caused a severe torsion of the fuselage, which contributed to more seats detaching, and to the collapsing of the false roof over the passengers' heads. After its speed slowed to about 35 knots 65 km per hour, 40 miles per hour, the aircraft ran for little more than 30 meters 33 yards and stopped, lying on its right side. Topic. Search and rescue On 5 September, two days after the crash, Alfonso Sariva and three other survivors started walking to look for help. After about two or three hours of walking in the jungle, the group found the house of the Curanare farm, in São José do Zingu. That farm had no radio, so they were taken by car to another farm, Serrao da Prata, reaching it around 12.30. With the help of radio operator João Capanima Jr., they were able to contact Franca Airport, 400 kilometers 250 miles north of São Paulo, and at 16.27 an Embraer EMB-110 Bandeirante airplane from the Brazilian Air Force FAB dropped food packages over the wreckage. By noon the next day, on their fourth day in the jungle, all survivors had been rescued by the FAB. Forty-one survivors were rescued from the crash site by helicopter which flew them 50 kilometers 30 miles to São José do Zingu, and from there they were flown by plane to Cachimbo Airport, 300 kilometers 190 miles to the northwest. They were then flown to Brasilia Base Hospital near Brasilia. Topic. Causes Upon investigation, it was concluded that the crash had been caused primarily by negligence on the part of the flight crew. Customary investigations showed that the aircraft was in perfect condition for the flight, and that its mandatory periodic inspections had been properly conducted. It was concluded that the main factor for the accident was an error in reading the correct heading from the flight plan by the commander, compounded by the copilot copying the setting from the commander's panel instead of checking the flight plan. The fact that plan course 0270 actually asked for 027.0 degrees was due to the VARIG standardization of flight planning for all its fleet, but only aircraft equipped with an inertial navigation system actually used headings with decimals. Despite the pilots having been told about this peculiarity in the airline's training program, the value expressed in the flight plan 0270 was interpreted by the commander as 270 degrees, he was on vacation during the change of standard. This misinterpretation changed the general direction from north-northeast to west 270 degrees. The Boeing 737 was not equipped with INS, using only automatic direction finders ADF, and VOR. Months after the accident, the flight plan VARIG 254 used was shown to 21 pilots of major airlines in the world during a test conducted by the International Federation of Airline Pilots Associations IFALPA. No fewer than 15 pilots committed the same mistake that the VARIG Flight 254 crew had made. 
After the Flight 254 accident, VARIG would install Omega navigation systems in their aircraft. Also, there were several contributing factors to the accident. The pilot did not realize he should be receiving a stronger VHF signal from Belem if he was nearing that airport, he should be receiving the local radio stations from Belem instead of other distant stations at the same frequencies, he should have checked his position and heading against the sun and geographic landmarks marks, and the airline's support team in Belem did not take action upon realizing the aircraft arrival was delayed. Captain Garce and First Ofkika Zil were both sentenced to four years in prison for their role in the accident, however this was later changed to community service. <laughs> See also